Hello folks and welcome to the channel and this is going to be a little bit of an overview of all the work we have done on the Formula Koenig. And the Formula Koenig is actually a racing car uh, that was actually used by Schumacher uh, when he started to race. Not this specific one but exactly the same model was used. Now this one is a modified one with a Kawasaki engine in it. So when we got it we went through all the inspections that we had to do because it was, to be uh, honest, in a very uh, sorry uh, state. Um, a lot of things were wrong, loose bolts. There had been a lot of messing around with it. So I think the previous owner really had a, a low budget. In fact, uh, the brakes were totally seized. The gearbox didn't shift anymore due to a clutch problem. So at the end, I decided uh, to take it completely apart and I started off with the front suspension system, removing all the whiz bones for a full inspection. But not only that, there was a lot of cleaning work to be done. And um, to be very honest, cleaning is not something I really like to do. I also decided to remove all the master brake cylinders and the master clutch cylinder just to get rid of it and either try to recondition them or to renew them, but at the end it turned out to be uh, that I had to replace them. The complete steering house had to be removed and verified and um, everything had to be realigned. Uh, the steering was not too bad, but still um, I had to clean it all up. Now the good thing about cleaning everything up is that you can do a thorough inspection on all the parts and the welding areas and so on. As you can see, things turned out quite all right after we um, powder coated it and all the ball joints have been verified and making sure that the tread is good. Uh, powder coating is for me um, one of uh, the solutions that works pretty well. The dashboard that we had on this car had a big spider on it, so I had to go and find a new one. And actually I got lucky, I found one on the internet and so here we are fitting the uh, brake balance and we are reorganizing the dashboard a bit. So it's going to look a bit better. Uh, this is the brake balance cable that was broken off. So we soldered a new one on. So when everything was kind of powder coated, we kind of reassembled everything just to make sure that everything lines up. You know, when you do this kind of work, uh, it's always a lot of uh, trial and error and trying to fit things together, see if it fits and then take it back off and modify it. But at the end, it all worked out just fine. The same thing was true for the brake balance. And um, here I'm actually uh, setting it in the right middle position. And now I can actually try it out. And we did uh, afterwards when we installed the pedals and it actually did work quite all right. Um, Meanwhile, I got my new master brake cylinders and I was able now to hook everything up and try to set the uh, master brake cylinders together with the brake pedal and the balance. Of course, we had to bleed the brakes and, of and you see here the new brake calibers already, but in fact, they are not new, they are reconditioned. So before I shot this video, I actually had been reconditioning the brake calibers and you'll see that in a few seconds. Luckily for me, I was able to get a second dashboard. So here we are reassembling the dashboard and then it goes back on the car together with the brand new uh, dash with the speedometer and the RPM meter. And you never know in advance if that's going to fit because cabling could be slightly different, but this was working out just fine. See, these are the old um, brake balance cables and the old brakes and you can see what state they were in so really I had to rebuild them although the discs weren't too bad I still had to you know take care of it because I hate to have dirty parts on a car so here we're starting to take the brake calibers apart and then see how we uh, can get the new kit for it and most of the time you can get reconditioning kits for them which is basically a seal for the inside, a dust cap on the outside, and a brand new cylinder. And if you're lucky, you have no corrosion inside the old units. So it may be hard to get the cylinder out sometimes. So I'm always trying to do this with a vise and then with compressed air. Now, this car had so many parts that I could not identify. So I had to look it up on the internet and then compare the dimensions 
And this is how I found out uh, what all these different parts were. The coilovers, I got real lucky with them because they were still in a very good shape. But still, uh, I inspected them. I verified the spring to see what the spring rate was. And meanwhile, I got all the parts to recondition the brakes. So uh, first thing I did was actually uh, clean them all up in the ultrasonic cleaner, then shot blast them with um, glass beads and it makes it real shiny. And at the same time, I also did the other parts. I honed the inside of the brake calibers a bit so I could put everything back together. And in between, I cleaned out the cockpit itself. There was a lot of cabling to be sorted out. We had to put in a new fire extinguisher because the old one was really expired. And the seat, well, it's a small seat, to be very honest. And um, I cleaned that one up and put some small padding up. It makes it a little bit more comfortable, not a lot. But for me, that was just good enough. Um, all the ball joints were verified. And at the end, I was able to reinstall the front suspension, as you see here. And I do tend to grease things uh, everywhere, basically. Um, that's just the way I work. Now, when I installed everything, I didn't lock down all the bolts for the suspension arms because I still need to adjust the camber and the caster and all that once everything is installed. So here we have the new uh, wheel spindles and uh, I'm putting up new studs uh, together with some Loctite so to make sure that they don't get loose. Luckily in the front, the bolts were long enough, which were not the case in the back. So I had to fix the bolts in the back later on and you'll see it later on in the video. The new brake calibers, uh, well, well, I'm sorry, the new master brake cylinders, they turned out to be working just fine. And after bleeding the brakes, we could actually try it all out. And that was quite all right. And I think you've seen this footage before. Uh, putting these uh, brake calibers up wasn't all that hard. Um, it's just a way to do it. And um, especially with the springs and the shims that go in between. But that wasn't all that hard at the end. And bleeding the brakes, well, that's easy if you have a bleeding mechanism. The steering house was uh, reassembled and put into place. Now we still have to adjust some of that. And I hope that my uh, tie rods on the steering house uh, are coinciding uh, with the incident center. And you'll see that in one of the later videos that I made. And here the front end is fully assembled. So now it was time for the rear end. And there we had some major issues. Not only were the brakes seized, but also the drive shafts were bent and seriously bent. So there was nothing else I could do than take these old drive shafts apart. And the funny thing was that the inner CV joints were actually from a Volkswagen. And the outer CV joints were from a Fiat X19. So that took me a little bit of time to figure that out. And that also means that the drive shaft is, well, kind of unique with different splines on both sides. So you can't really buy those. So here you see that old drive shaft, how that's been messed around with. And you can actually see they actually took two and they welded them together. So I kind of machined myself um, the old one um, into a proper drive shaft. And then I connected the two pieces together as straight as I could, welded it up, and then finally, um, I put it back on the lathe, and here you can see how straight it was. And at the end, I just powder coated it, and um, it looked quite all right, I think, uh, when I was all done with it, compared to old and new. However, um, it probably wasn't hard enough, so at the end, I decided to get new ones uh, made by a professional company. Here I'm disassembling the complete rear uh, suspension, because I'm putting up new uh, spindles and we go into shell blast and powder coat to complete suspension and inspect all the ball joints. The specific ball joint had a bit of play, so we fixed that. Now you probably saw me punching in some marks. I always do that so I know exactly what the front is and where which part goes where. Here I'm disconnecting the sway bar, the shock absorbers, it, it's a little bit of removing of bolts, to be honest, to take all this apart. But the good thing is I had easy access. Now, the coilovers, again, on in the back, they were in good condition. 
I double check the springs just like the other. Now you can see the bump stop, that's a bit crap, uh, cracked. So that's the one I probably should replace or I have replaced. The, getting the chain off, well, that was a different story. They didn't put the chain on properly. They kind of welded the knuckle together where the connection was. So I started to clean the drive shaft. And um, this is not an oil-based uh, drive shaft. This is a grease-based drive shaft. For the rear suspension, well, we did exactly the same job. We powder coated all the wrist bones. And now it was time to install brand new bearings uh, for the uh, differential. The radiator, well, that was in a real sorrow state, as you can see. And um, I had to replace the radiator with a second-hand radiator. I also had a new one, but I didn't put the new one up because I think the second-hand one that I had was in a much better state or quality than actually the brand new one. So after the radiator went in, I had to trial fit uh, the body just to make sure that it does fit. So here we are locking down the uh, new radiator and um, because the old one was just held in place uh, with tie wraps. Uh, so here I'm just using some rivets to keep it all in place. You can see that the new fan I'm putting up is quite a bit bigger than the old one. And then testing it out. So it's actually sucking here and blowing through the radiator. The cabling, well, that was a major mess, a spider nest, I would say. So I started to clean that up and that was really a lot of work to clean that up and then re-terminate all the wires uh, where I had to. But at the end, um, it turned out to be a tight uh, job. So uh, I like clean cabling. I don't like uh, too much stuff floating around. And I have the habit of soldering a lot of stuff and then using a heat shrink. Then it was time actually to install the battery because there was no battery in it, the battery relay, the starter relay. So all this stuff was actually quite loose inside. So I um, made a fixture for the battery. And uh, here we're testing for the very first time all the cabling, just to make sure everything worked. I emptied the fuel tank, put new fuel filters up, and then we made some additional attachments with aluminum, um, getting out all the old spark plugs, and even one of those was not the right one. We filled up a new oil, a new cooling liquid, and at the end, I found the problem with it, so I decided to put a new expansion tank in. So here we are preparing the expansion tank, and at the end, um, that improved a lot the cooling, as you can see here. Uh, so now that's running quite nicely up to about 78 degrees centigrade on idle. And the last thing to do was to install a spill tank uh, because that plastic bottle that you saw before really wasn't very pretty, was it? So at the end, um, everything started to look pretty good and then tight and cleaned up. So now it was time to install the rear suspension again because we hadn't done that. So we went through the complete cleaning and inspection process and then we were able to reinstall the complete rear suspension. I haven't adjusted anything on the suspension yet at that stage. That's something that we were doing later in one of the follow-on videos and those are still in production uh, while I speak. Here I'm hooking up the upper and the lower wishbones and then I will connect the upright to it. And I had a small problem for the upper wishbone. I couldn't really get it in. So I knocked a little bit uh, that attachment open so it fitted a little bit easier. And then we locked it down again. I'm trying to use a lot of self-locking nuts. Uh, that is always very helpful. And once the, all the alignment is done, I will certainly put marks on all these nuts so I can do a quick inspection. Here I'm foot, fitting actually the, um, the wheel spindle with new studs. And uh, you might notice that the bolts are not coming through the um, spindle. And that is because um, they were too short. But they were on the car before, so I decided at the end actually to change them out with longer bolts after I had one of the comments on the video. And here we are installing the rear uh, brakes, um, just like we did with the front ones. Um, and um, that's about it. So now we were about ready to start working on the differential and um, 
the drive shaft. And here you see me creating the new bolts um, to hold the uh, spindles, and they are a bit longer. And as you can see, we have minimum play on that disc. There's a little bit of it, but almost nothing. So now it was time to put in the new bearings uh, for the differential, and I had to grind the locking grooves for that. And then we press the bearings onto the differential. And now the differential is uh, ready to receive actually the adapters for the drive shafts. Like I said before, in the middle, it's a Volkswagen part. Putting the CV joints up, because they're brand new, um, is always a greasy job because you gotta pack them full. And once they're fully packed, you put the shaft in and then don't forget to put the gator up, but don't put it backwards like I just did here. And when all that was done, um, we locked the gators into place and we could actually install the drive shaft. So that went in quite smooth. And now it was time to um, bleed the rear brakes um, and actually install the new chain. So I got a brand new chain and cut it to length. And uh, here we are connecting the chain together. And for that one, I'm using a special tool for that because it's so much easier to do it. And then that was the first time I drove it. So now it was time for some cosmetics. So I applied the base coat and I did the uh, blue paint and then finally the varnish. And I forgot the nose cone, so I did that afterwards. We added some stickers to it and then we reassembled the air filter and some other small parts um, onto the engine. And now finally, the race car was ready, uh, besides the fact that it still had to be aligned. And here it is in its final location. And I call it Steve's Man Cave, but I think this race car really looks nice now. So now the next thing we're going to do is to get it ready uh, for the racetrack and do some alignment. Thank you for viewing.